Okay, now that we have Lake Nakuru uh, being one of the parks that is right next to a, a city, Nakuru City, we expect that activities happening outside Lake Nakuru, which are driven by human activities, will definitely influence the park. And one of the critical aspects is pollution. We require to ensure that we have proper plans to mitigate the issues of pollution affecting this lake. So waste management, domestic waste management, industrial waste management is a critical issue that uh, we need to focus on. But as a result of this increase, we have seen habitat modification. If you look at the shoreline, you can see dry acacia trees. So that used to be an acacia forest. So we've lost most of that part of the ecosystem. Again, the lake, we have seen a decline in uh, alkaline, alkalinity. From around the 10 at the pH scale to currently around 8. The impact of the rise in the When that gate was being constructed, the lake was more than a kilometer behind. And it was being constructed in 2008. Yeah? And from now that 2010, hmm, the lake level has been rising until in uh, when we came back in 2019, you could actually stand, May 2019, you could stand in the middle of that gate. Last year, but one, in 2020, the water had reached the roof. And there's been those pictures that are going around on social media. Yeah? And some of the other challenges that have arisen is like what you are seeing. The park was once, uh, there is a fence. You see like here was fenced with an electric fence. But because of the water rising, the fence had to be powered off. Yeah? Then now, animals could move back and forth. Yeah? And of critical importance again is to look at the issue of plastic pollution affecting the lake. And we are glad that these regulations that have been put in place to ensure that this minimal plastic trying to get into this lake ecosystem. Look at the issues affecting Lake Nakuru, which is a wetland, and that falls right in my docket to ensure that we interact with communities, with the nation, with the journalists, to speak about what is happening to our ecosystem in a very simple way. And one of the important uh, reasons, again, why we think that Lake Nakuru is very critical is because it has been recognized globally as a wetland of international importance because of the biodiversity that we find here. For example, you can see in the background we have a lot of flamingos, which is a flagship uh, species for conservation for Lake Nakuru. It has also been recognized as an uh, important bird area, which is a global recognition, again because of the diverse bird community that is found here. Uh, we are not only talking about the birds. This place is a, ry a rhino sanctuary, uh, and a, a rhino sanctuary is a very critical area for conservation because that's where we have again this important species uh, being conserved. And one of the things that we we found out was that, uh, of course, these rift lakes, even in in literature, they continuously fluctuate, and they were much higher levels than this now, recorded in around 1960, between 62 and 65 for all the lakes, and in the early 1900s. So this is a phenomenon that, sorry, that comes every uh, 50 years or something. And then secondly, there are those factors of this that increased, increased rainfall. Those of you who live around the Rift Valley lakes, you'll see within the last 10 years, Water levels have, we've, the rains we have been have been increasing. We have been receiving much more rainfall, and even these uh, rising lake levels are not only within the Kenyan Rift. It was even seen in uh, even in Uganda, and even along the Nile. Uh, this recognition is jointed with three other conservation areas, which is Mugoria and uh, Elementaita. And the reason why 
the park was given that recognition is because of the richness in biodiversity. We also have endangered species. We have the Rothschild giraffe. We have uh, black rhinos. We have white rhinos. We have lions. And it is also a migratory route for birds. It is the single largest foraging site for the lesser flamingo. So besides that, the park and the lake is also a Ramsar site. It is an important bird area. It is also a rhino sanctuary. Uh, we shall continue when we are going inside. Uh, the Euphobia forest, as you heard, it was one of the largest stands. It was affected by fire. And uh, for those of you who know something about Euphobia, the sap is very flammable. So if it catches fire, it like, explodes and it was uh, cleared out. And we have been carrying out two activities. One was that artificial uh, regeneration. We had a nursery where we were trying to grow them artificially and then replanting them in the park. And also we have noticed there's some aspect of natural regeneration. So it is recovering although slowly and also you've tried some artificial uh, propagation. Did a population of what? The buffaloes? The, the, the. We had a count, we've done two counts, one in 2021 and also in uh, 2022 we did a recent count and the populations that we saw in 2021 was about 6,100 buffaloes. We're using a, a helicopter aerial count and in 2022, we got about 7,200 uh, buffaloes. So the number has increased, yes. But also, there is that uh, what the warden was mentioning about natural nutrition. Of course, because this is a closed system, there are some which are eaten by the predators. We have uh, lions, we have uh, uh, hyenas, and, and others. We have also leopards. So there's that natural nutrition. And yes, even when we embark on that uh, translocation or any other management intervention, we are continuously undertaking surveillance of the wildlife. Even during the time when we had the drought period, we were also su undertaking disease surveillance to ascertain that these animals were not dying because of diseases. Fresh water lake. And with these changes, with this habitat modification, we are seeing species that were not here previously. We right now have a new, three new fish species, therapy, and we have also seen an increase in uh, fresh water birds in the lake. And again, as a challenge, the increase of the lake size, both area and depth, we are seeing a reduction in the terrestrial space. For other wildlife and for, for the herbivores and other predators. So in terms of biodiversity, the park is rich in terms of birds and mammals with over 450 mammals recorded. In terms of international significance, the park is a wild heritage site 